I have seen some studies using value-added scores that I've been very favorably impressed with that really have been useful, genuine contributions to the, to the research literature and the knowledge base. I've mentioned in my talk the study by uh, Chetty, Rock, uh, Chetty Friedman and Rockoff, uh, 2011, uh, MBER working paper, where they showed using a very large database that there are enduring long-term effects of quality teaching. And this is reassuring. It's something we all believe. If we didn't think that teachers really mattered and that good teaching mattered relative to weak teaching, then we wouldn't be in this business. Of course, effective teachers are important. And of course, some teachers are more effective than others. That study was done using a very large number of records. It was used, done using data that were collected in low stakes context. Uh, the data were merged with, uh, data, with other sources of information not generally available microdata from the census, IRS records that allowed them to look for hidden biases and use some variables that ordinarily are not included in these models at all. And they were able to arrive at some very creative conclusions. It, it really is a contribution. And that's a study that's pooling across many, many teachers and millions of kids. So we have a, uh, a way of damping down all that random noise by averaging across a larger number of observations. So that doesn't happen when we're looking at one teacher at a time. Uh, <clears throat> the result is a scholarly, con a scholarly contribution, a, a, a finding about the, the state of the world that, that we're interested in. It's not being used for consequential decisions. And those authors point out that if the, state, if the tests were high stakes, we might, they might have gotten different answers. In fact, if you look at the footnotes in their article, uh, they set aside the 2% or so of teachers that had the highest measured test score gains because, as they put it, the pattern of findings for those teachers were su suspiciously consistent with inappropriate me methods of test preparation or, or score manipulation. When those records, for just the top 2%, just the tiny pinch, the, the last little pinch at the top of the distribution, when those are put into the model, the long-term enduring effects that they found were reduced from 20 to 40%. So these findings are fragile, they're sensitive. It's a real tour de force to be able to pull them out, but that work is worth doing. There's a paper a year or two ago by um, Wyckoff and Loeb and some of their collaborators, uh, Boyd, I'm not sh I think perhaps, I'm not sure, looking at um, different attributes of various kinds of teacher pre-service preparation programs and their relation to teachers value added. Again, going across a large number of programs and a large number of teachers. And that study also is, is useful in showing us what works and what doesn't work. That, that's, that's valuable. The findings are commonsensical. They're, they would not be a surprise to experienced teacher educators by and large, but it's good to have the hard documentation. However, that's very different from the proposals that were being floated not too long ago, maybe they're still current, with the, uh, <coughs> for the evaluation of teacher preparation programs on the basis of the graduates' uh, value-added scores. That now we've suddenly taken uh, a, scholarly, a scholarly investigation using a large data set and arriving at general knowledge, and we've morphed that into an individual level high stakes evaluation of particular programs, which of course is going to be much more errorful and produce uh, incentives that we really don't want to have out there, like teacher preparation programs trying to place their graduates in schools where the value added is going to look good. Uh, it, it just it changes everything when you change the context. 